Hi, this is Ram from RamKeren.com. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use the having clause. The having clause, as you are about to see, allows us to create filters based on group functions. Let's see an example. Select city average monthly discount from customers group by city. The average monthly discount for each city. Now, say we want to filter our result set to display only cities with average monthly discount greater than 25, for example. So let's say where average monthly discount is greater than 25. As we learned in previous lessons, the WHERE clause allows us to filter our result set. Let's try to execute. As you can see, we are getting an error. We cannot filter group functions using the WHERE clause. How can we fix this issue and why did it happen in the first place? Let's start with the HOW. In order to fix this issue, all we need is to copy this statement, paste it after the GROUP BY clause, and change the WHERE clause to HAVING. Now let's re-execute. And as you can see, we are getting the expected results. So the HAVING clause allows us to filter GROUP functions, and this clause syntactically appears after the GROUP BY clause. Now, why can't we use WHERE clause to filter group functions? For that, we need to understand that there's a difference between the syntactical order of SQL clauses and the order by which these clauses are actually being evaluated. This is the syntactical order of clauses. This is how we type a SQL statement. We say, select, from, WHERE, group by, having, order by. On the other hand, this is the order by which these clauses are actually being evaluated. From, where, group by, having, select, order by. First, the SQL engine chooses the tables in order to get the base data. Then it filters the results. Then performs the aggregations. Then filters the aggregated data and only then it returns the requested columns and sorts the result set. Now, you can clearly see that the WHERE clause is being executed before the GROUP BY clause, meaning this is a filter that is being executed before the aggregate calculations, and therefore cannot be used to filter aggregate calculations. The HAVING clause, on the other hand, is being executed after the GROUP BY clause, after we actually performed our aggregate calculations. This is why the HAVING clause is capable to filter aggregate calculations. We can sum up and say, the WHERE clause is good for filtering values before the aggregation. The HAVING clause is good for filtering aggregated values. If this concept is still misunderstood, let me give you another example. Suppose we have a list of students in three classes. Now, there's a difference between filtering all of the students with grade greater than 50 and then ask for the average, to calculate the average for each class, and then ask for all classes with average grade greater than 90. Again, the WHERE clause is good for filtering values before the aggregation. The HAVING clause is good for filtering the aggregated values. Let's see how can we use the HAVING and WHERE clauses at the same SQL statement. Say we want to display for each customer, city, and monthly discount. So we can say, select city, monthly, discount, from customers. Now suppose we want to filter the result set to display only cities which their name starts with B. So we can add the following WHERE clause, we can say WHERE CITY LIKE B. As expected, we are getting only cities that starts with the letter B. Let's aggregate this result set to return one value per city. 
So for example, we can say average monthly discount group by city. We are getting the average monthly discount for each city only for cities that starts with the letter B. Note we have aggregated a filtered data set. The WHERE clause filtered our base data before the aggregation. Now having these results, we can further restrict the query and display only cities with average monthly discount greater than 25. We can say having average monthly discount greater than 25. Again, the having clause was used to filter the aggregated results. I hope the concept of using where and having is clear to you by now. Okay, so in this lesson, we learned how to use the having clause. Please feel free to ask any question you may have in the comments section below. And if you are looking for a way to practice what we have just learned, in ramkedem.com you will find hundreds of exercises on many different levels. More details can be found in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.